and welcome to my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is my part two of my recent sewing summer makes. <laughs> I should have probably come up with a proper name, shouldn't I? But anyway, <laughs> I did part one last week and I will put a link in here if you would like to see it. Um, I just have not posted a video for quite some time about all of my sewing makes. I put everything together to do a video for you and realised it was too much for one video. So decided, right, let's break it up into two different videos. <laughs> so this is part two. So before I start, I will just quickly uh, share with you what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Esty Top by Tilly and the Buttons in this beautiful fabric that I've got from Guthrie Garney. However, they don't have it in stock anymore, but they do have similar items like it. And I've actually got it on with a pair of jeans today. I've been to the beach, um, with my family it's quite a cold and chilly day today but we've been to a place called slaps and sands which is a really nice place to go for a very naughty fish and chips <laughs> and an ice cream which was lovely and um i just wanted something that was a bit warmer than you know the trousers that that come with the sd so i put my jeans on I actually had it on with a jacket that I've made as well, which I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it up on the screen and I'll put a picture up as well. Um, but I had that on today and just felt really nice and put together. Um, I've actually got a video in collaboration with Karen from So Little Time all about the Esty set. And I will put a link into that here as well, <laughs> if you would like to see that, because I had to make lots of different alterations to make this fit me properly. and. Um, I go into all of that and all of the detail in that video but this is actually a recent make but i'm not sharing it properly now with you i'm just showing you Ta -da, there we go <laughs> so i'm going to crack straight on with all of the things that i've made i am going to share with you a little um clip from amy a little bit later as well because she's been doing lots of knitting and um she has said that she'd like to do a a, a little video for you guys so i'll be putting that in a little bit later on in this video so first things first not clothing but this is my overlocker cover that came with my overlocker. It's got lots of holes in it. It has got a burn mark where I put the iron next to it once. And it is completely and utterly falling apart. I mean, it just about gives the uh, machine a little bit of protection from dust, I suppose, but, but barely. <laughs> but it really is falling apart. So I decided enough's enough I'm going to make a cover and I made this from a fabric that I bought from one of the shows that I've been to in the last year or so it is just I don't know what you call it like a canvasy sort of fabric almost but hessian type fabric with these lovely little strawberries all over it I bought some piping from Hobbycraft that matched in with the strawberries and I took the pattern from the Closet Core website if you sign up to their newsletter which is totally free to sign up you actually get access to a few different patterns there's a poof there's a sew machine cover i i can't remember all of them but there are quite a few different ones and um this is one of them it's totally adjustable so you can adjust it so that it fits your machine but i took the measurements of it and realized that it fit my machine perfectly so i didn't make any adjustments to mine and i've got for reference a janome uh 6234xl so i'm just having a look to see what the name is if that um if that helps you but yeah absolutely brilliant with the top of the threads pushed down this fits perfectly and it's a lot neater than this thing that is literally falling apart. <laughs> so not the most exciting, but that was make number one. Make number two, I made the uh, glass house patterns silene tea. I think that's how you say it. I'm not quite sure how you say it, but the silene tea. And I'm really pleased with how this t-shirt has come out. I saw somebody recently had made it. I think it was Helen from Stitch Rip Repeat had made it. In fact, I think she's made a few versions of it. And I suddenly remembered I had the pattern and I thought, oh yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. And I could do with some white t-shirts. So I dug the pattern out and um, made this pattern up, put a little label in, which is a little rosy cheeks label that says I made this I quite like that against the white that looks really nice and um it's it's just a really nice basic t-shirt however what I will say is it's funny isn't it I've I've tried lots of different t-shirt patterns over time and there are a couple of t-shirts that I put on that I've made 
that I always think when I put it on, oh, this is my favourite t-shirt and I really, really like it. And this is a lovely t-shirt. I do like it. I think it's, I think it's really nice. But I think my favourite t-shirt to make is the Deer and Doe Givre. I've made um, one t-shirt and several dresses of, of that pattern and it's just such a nice shape and it fits my body nicely and I like the fit of the t-shirt and all the rest of it so I do think if I make any more t-shirts I might go back to that pattern but this is very nice at first I thought when I'd made it it was a bit too big but actually I don't think it is I think it's perfectly fine so this fabric is actually a leftover piece of fabric from a kit that I got from Guthrie Garney when I was making a kit of theirs a, a year or two ago I can't remember what the kit is this comes in sizes now, I'm going to have to look at my, my notes here. This comes in sizes um, 1 to 8, which is from a 31 inch bust to a 45 inch bust. And I made the size 4. Now, I'm telling you what the sizes are, just in case you have the pattern. But unfortunately, this pattern is no longer available, which is a bit of a shame, really. Um, but um, if you do have it and haven't made it, that's that's what it looks like and hopefully you'll have seen the pictures as well of me wearing it too but yeah just a very basic make but do you know what sometimes you just need a basic make and it's nice to have some basics in your um in your wardrobe to pair up with different things um i definitely need a plain black t-shirt and i could do with a plain navy blue t-shirt as well so i will go and dig out my deer and doe pattern and probably make that if i'm honest i think i prefer that to this one but this is perfectly nice too as well Anyway, I'm going to go on and share with you the next pattern, which you will have seen in those pictures of the T-shirt as well. The trousers that I had on in the previous pictures of the previous pattern that I just showed you were the Sophia trousers, but with a little bit of a twist. So the Sophia trousers are from this book, the Make It Simple book by Tilling the Buttons. And this is what the pattern looks like. It's a really wide legged, very simple, very easy to make trouser. It doesn't have a waistband. You just fold over the top of the trousers to create a waistband. So it's not a separate piece. It has elasticated waistband at the back and it's got a flat front at the front. It hasn't got pockets on it, but it does show you in the book how to put side seam pockets in if you decided to do that. But I wanted to try something a bit different. So I've got these trousers here and you will see it has actually got a waistband on. And I'll show you the rest of it as well. It has got some patch pockets on the front. Now, I, I've had a little bit of a disaster with this pair of trousers, but I, I think I'm generally pleased with them. But I'll talk you through what happened. Basically, my girls had on a pair of trousers, ready to wear trousers, and they're elasticated waist oatmealy kind of colour um, trouser and it just looked lovely. I think Ellen had a pair on and Katie had a pair on and they had them on with different t-shirts and jackets and things like that and they just looked really really nice and I thought I could really do with a pair of trousers similar to that. So I bought this fabric which is a viscose linen and I bought it from Make It 140 and it's a really nice drapey linen it feels lovely it washed beautifully I cannot fault the fabric at all it's really really nice but I decided that I wanted to if I stand up and show you I decided I wanted to have these sort of um patch pockets on them and because the the waistband was a fold down waistband I didn't think that that would work very well so what I did is I created a waistband in the depth that I wanted it to be so whatever it was I sort of doubled it and then added on the um the seam allowance for that and then I chopped off the top of the trouser or I thought I chopped off the top of the trouser I don't think I did I then took a pattern piece from um a dungaree pattern I think it was a Turia dungarees that I had and I made this pocket piece up you can't see it very well can you because it's all one colour but I took this pocket piece and um I added it onto the trouser put the waistband on and it would they were really really long just really long in the crotch I mean like my crotch came there and the trousers were like down here and I was like I don't know what I've done and I don't think I actually remembered to cut the top of the trousers off which was a bit stupid and I didn't want these to go to waste because I'd really liked the idea of having these 
So I unpicked the waistband completely, all of the overlocking, all of the stitching, and I literally took the waist of the trousers down, or the top of the trousers down, by a good, ooh, I don't know what it was, probably five centimetres, something like that, so about two inches, and then sewed the waistband back on. But obviously what that meant was, because I had done that, it made these pockets quite short. So on the original pair, these had the illusion of being a lot longer, and this opening was a lot bigger, and now because I've cut the top of them off, it's actually kind of just chopped it off and made them a bit short and squat, which is a bit of a shame really. Um, but they do fit better and I am pleased with them and I will wear them. I haven't worn them yet because I've been hanging them up waiting to do this video for you guys. So I don't like wear my clothes until I have, which is silly, I know. But anyway, so that's, that is how I did the top of the waistband and that's kind of what went wrong with them. However, the other thing that I did, is you might notice from the pictures, that they are not quite as wide legged as they are in this picture here. So you'll see here, these are really, really wide legged and I just didn't want them to be quite as wide as that. So what I had done is I had, um, I put them on inside out and I pinned down the legs on each side, on the inside and the outside edge of the of the trousers. Um, I pinned down where I felt I wanted them to come. And then I very carefully tried them on the right way around to sort of see if that kind of looked right. And then I just drew a very natural line and what I felt looked right to just bring them in a little bit each side. And you'll see that they're just not quite as wide now as the original Sophia trousers are. And I'm so pleased with how that's come out because that's that's much more my sort of style. I feel happy with that. I just need to sort out this crotch nonsense that, <laughs> that I um and um and, and make them you know make them again but maybe in a, in a different fabric but I am generally really really pleased with them it's just a bit of a shame that I messed up with the with the top um the top waistband section but I think they are going to be a really nice pair of trousers to have in the summer just to be able to sort of chuck on when when I'm like just going out and you know want to be nice and cool and don't particularly want to be dressed up in a big dress and all that kind of thing so yeah on the whole I'm pretty pleased with them I'm just a bit gutted that I messed up the top section <laughs> I thought I'd catch you up with a little bit of knitting that I've been doing recently I don't have knitting projects to share with you on a on a regular basis because I'm very very slow at knitting and I go through peaks and troughs of going right I'm gonna really knit this and every evening I'll sit down and I'll knit loads and loads and loads and when I say knit loads I'll knit lots for me because I am quite slow at knitting um but I thought I would just um come back and share with you because a little while ago I said that I was going to be making this pattern here which is the Ravello jumper and I got this pattern off of Ravelry. It was only, I think it was only a couple of pounds to buy. It's by somebody called Isabel Kramer, or Kramer, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it, it's this really lovely jumper and you can change how many stripes are on it. You can, you know, do whatever you like with it. And I had bought all of the yarn to start making it and it's only partially made, but I thought I'd just show you how I'm getting on with it. So let's tuck some of these ends in. So there's the top obviously it hasn't got any sleeves on it at the moment i'm really pleased with how it's coming out um this is navy blue at the bottom it looks black on the screen doesn't it navy blue at the bottom with cream and green stripes it just has a very basic roll over edge neckline which i'm hoping once that's all washed that's going to sort of even out and look quite nice um and then the sleeves it will continue with stripes going down the sleeves and then they'll be navy blue as well so I'm just really on the very basic part at the moment of going down um, the body. I'm not increasing or decreasing at the moment. So I'm just literally knitting and knitting and knitting away um, to get to get the length that I need. This is a bit cropped at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> but I quite like how this, um, this sort of stitch line has come out along the, um, almost like creating like a raglan type sort of image across the sleeve and the body of the knitting. I really like that. I think that's really pretty and really nice. And it's just 
hopefully going to be a really nice jumper. So I'm, I'm going to try my very hardest to keep going and keep going with that. <laughs> but I thought I would just catch you up with where I am, bearing in mind I did share that quite some time ago that I was going to do it. <laughs> so I'm going to pass you over to Amy now and she's going to share with you some of her makes. Hello. So mum's asked me to talk about what I've been up to. I obviously haven't done a video in a while but um so I won't be able to talk about every single thing that I've made because we'd be here a very long time <laughs> but I'll just go through some things that I've been up to so first thing I don't know if I talked about this but I'm wearing it so I'll tell you about it this is camisole number no. five by my favorite things knitwear and the wool is from typical bliss it's from her Willy Wonka collection from last year at some point I think it was around Christmas time uh, and it's the colour is golden ticket and I think it's very nice summery colour I'll show you I've got it tucked in right now but I've done it quite long um yeah I think it's quite nice tonal and I really like the finishing on it I think I picked up too many stitches I picked up the number of stitches it said to pick up um, but I think that was possibly too many for, for my gauge. Um, but I mean, it's fine. I could probably put elastic in it as well, eventually. But to be honest, it doesn't really bother me. Um, obviously, not not bra friendly, as you can see. So I don't mind for wearing it casually. But in for if I was going to a, a job or anything like that, I wouldn't wear it. Um, so yeah. There's one finished object. Another finished object is this jumper that I'm sat on. <laughs> so I, I, mum bought me this wool from a charity shop. She found it and they were like a pounder ball or something and there was loads of them. And it's a blown fibre, <clears throat> sorry. I think it's a cotton chain with wool, merino wool blown into it. I'm pretty sure it's Wendy's, I think it was called. Um, looked quite old um so i decided to make a jumper by uh kudvakika on instagram and youtube called salty day sweater so here it is uh, which i really like oh like obviously i mean the pattern is so cool and it was really fun to make but I don't like the feeling of it on my on my skin. Um, I don't know what. I don't know why. Um, the cuffs. The, the, it's knit on a. I did it on a six millimeter needle, and the cuffs were done on like a three point five millimeter needle. And I think just that denseness in the cuffs. I think that's just. I think that's the problem. So I don't like. And it was an Italian bind off, which is fine. I, I don't think I like certain bind offs. Bind binds offs. Bind offs. Um I know they look nice, but I just don't really like the feeling of them, if they're on my wrists anyway. And I also find that they mine are very loose. People say they're very stretchy, but my mine are I mean very tight. Mine are very tight. Um I don't know. So I'm going to give this another go. I'm, I'm going to try wearing it a bit more, maybe put some fabric softener in it, like see if it will, I don't know, soften somehow. Um, if not, I'll probably give it to someone because I don't want to undo it because it's, you know, I could, I could use the wool, but it is nice. I think it's just me sensory wise. I just don't really like the feeling of it. Anyway, so there's another finished object. A third finished object, I won't show you any more after this one, but I thought this was cute. So my, I have a bit of an obsession with Highland cows, <laughs> I just think they're so cute. Um, and my little sister got a crochet set from Toft for Christmas or her birthday or something. She's tried making it a couple of times, but she, she hasn't been able to follow the pattern. She's recently discovered she doesn't really like following crochet patterns, she likes making up her own stuff and she's absolutely, I don't know how she does it, I, I couldn't make stuff up like she does but anyway so she's given it to me so I made Morag the Highland Coo from the Toff UK set uh, and here we go <laughs> so she's pretty cute 
it's made with these loop stitches which is what Ellen found hard and they were hard and actually I finished each piece and I think they're all all of the loops are a bit small I did them a bit small which I didn't mind for the body but for the head <laughs> it looked like Annie <laughs> It, the loops were really small so what I did instead of redoing the entire head just got with the left leftover wool I threaded it onto a needle and just pulled through some longer loops so it's a bit better I don't think it's quite as long as the pattern says it should be but I don't mind I, I think she's pretty cute and she sits on my bed in amongst all of my cushions and things um, the only thing is when I was making it, I didn't, I made the tail, but then I didn't think about positioning the head and everything in relation to the tail. So the tail is, is quite wonky. It's over here, it should be more like here. But I still think she's pretty cute. And I, it's not enough for me to unsew all of it because you cannot see your stitches in here. So, don't matter. Oh, she's super cute. So those are all the finished objects that I'm gonna talk about. I will talk about what I'm making right now. Um, well, I'm not really making right now because I've got wrist pain. I've been off of uni for a couple of weeks and I did have work experience for about a month and now I'm free and I haven't got an awful lot to do. I've got some things that I'm doing, but the majority of my day is spent knitting. And yesterday in the afternoon, I suddenly thought, ow. <laughs> And I kept going, and then a, a couple of videos ago, somebody commented on on the YouTube channel saying, just telling you to be careful, because you can get carpal tunnel, you can get serious wrist injuries, and I can't stop thinking about it. So I'm stopping. I've tried doing some crochet, because so, it's like a different wrist mu movement, but I should probably just stop for the day and find find something else to do. But anyway, I'll show you what I'm working on regardless. So. I am making, <clears throat> I went to the charity shop with my sister and I found a cone of wool, here we go, I think it's about 500 grams, I haven't weighed it but it looks about that to me, of four ply Shetland wool, that's all it said on it, I don't even think it said four ply but I worked it out, yeah it just says Shetland Dusk, don't know what company it is, don't know, it was £2.50. And I thought, well, I've got to get that. <laughs> so I did. And I was too excited to not cast something on with it, even though I've got millions of other things that I could be making. But anyway. Um, and basically, I'm part of a group, a musical group at my uni. And we have concerts twice a year. And every time you need to wear all black, which I've got an all black dress, all black shoes. But I never have a cardigan. And I, I don't want to buy one because <laughs> I never wear black. I don't like wearing black and it doesn't suit me. But I thought this was £2.50. I'll get more than one cardigan out of this. And I might as well. So I'm making a cardigan. I'll show you what it is. It's from a book called Vintage Knits for Him and Her that my sister got me a couple of years ago for Christmas. And I've never actually made a pattern from it. Um... But I am now, and this is number nine or ten. Number nine cardigan. So it comes as a two piece set. I'm just making the cardigan part of it. There you go. So this is meant to be like 50s. Um, so I'm just making the cardigan. I'm going to make the sleeves longer than three quarter length. Um, it's just nice and simple. So I'll show you what I've done so far. I'm only like halfway through the back. It's on 3.5 millimeter needles. It looks very see-through right now. Very, very see-through. But my swatch, let me show you my swatch. My swatch looked like that and then I washed it and I think because it's on a cone and it's very old, it's gonna fluff up. And I think, I mean, this is still quite see-through, see? But it's a lot better and also, when it's on my skin, because it's not going to be like loosey loose, you're not going to see, you know, it's just going to be on my skin and on a black dress. I think it's going to be fine. Either way, it's £2.50 and 
it's nice to do. Yeah, see, look, when it's on me, you can't tell. When it's off, you can. But I'd, even if it is like that, I, I'm not bothered. Not bothered. So, yeah, I'm hoping to finish the back today. Um, there we go. I'm also working on... I'm, I'm working on a jumper for my boyfriend, which isn't... I'm worried about the sizing, so I'm seeing him next week and I'm just going to get him to close his eyes and hold it up on him and see what that looks like and what I should do. Um, but I won't bother showing you that until I've got a bit more on it because I've only kind of got the first... It's the same construction as the Salty Day sweater. It's got like this kind of cast on here and you increase to make this kind of um, trapezium. So I've kind of got a little bit of a trapezium, not much going on. <clears throat> That's the Moby sweater by Petite Knit that I'm doing. But anyway, my wrist was hurting, so I started crocheting something to see if it would make me feel better. Basically, you see why... Ooh, there. <laughs> I've got, like, some skincare stuff, like, stuffies every day, and it just doesn't look very pretty. So I'm making a little, like, mat for it all to be on so it kind of looks like it's got a place. Um, and I've got this Plutalope, which I didn't know what to do with. And I thought, it'd be quite nice. So I'm just holding two strands together, just crocheting a rectangle. Nothing very exciting about that. It smells really nice. I got this second hand. Um, somebody gave, gifted it to me. And I don't know if their house just smells like like this or if all Plutalope comes smelling like this. I don't know. <laughs> but there you go. Um, yeah. That's all I have time to share with you. I'm going to be just stash busting now until um, Christmas, I think, because I don't have... I, I've got a lot to use up, a lot of scraps to use up. I also am going to Stitches and Cream in Falmouth with Mum on Wednesday. So I'm looking forward to that. And I probably will be coming back with something, but I'm not going to cast it on until I've got rid of a few projects and scraps and things. So, yeah, hope that's been entertaining <laughs> uh, and very, very quick. Yeah, see you later, bye. My next make is the True Bias Shelby dress and I have made this as um, a blog for Minerva. They gifted me the fabric so that I could um, make something and write a blog up in return. So I got this fabric and I think it was slightly different than what I felt it looked like on the website. But you know, sometimes when things come and you're like, oh, it's a little bit different. I think I thought it was a bit bluer and it is quite blue, but it has got the look of being quite sort of lavendery and purpley. Now, I am pleased with this dress and I'll put some images up and a little bit of video of what this looks like on and I will um, talk you through sort of some of the things that I've kind of come across with it because I'm not 100% happy with this. I feel like I'm saying that about everything that I'm talking to you about. I'm not 100% happy with this. Um, I made this in a size eight. So I'm just looking at my notes again, in a size eight. And this comes in um, two different size ranges. It comes in a zero to 18 in a paper and PDF format. And it also comes in a 14 to 32 in PDF only format. So those size ranges then range from a bust size 32 up to a 59 and a half inch bust. So it has a fairly good size range. And I made the size eight, which is really accurate for my size. I also had the benefit before making this that I'd made this previously in a jumpsuit version because it comes as a short dress, a long dress, a play suit and a, and a long sort of jumpsuit. But the when I say jumpsuit, the, the legs are very, very wide. So it almost looks like a skirt when you're wearing it, but they are really big and floaty and I'm quite fancy having a go at doing that at some point, but I haven't, haven't quite ventured into doing that yet. So I made this previously and if I can find a picture, I'll put a picture of the short jumpsuit up that I made using this pattern. And I tried it on just to double, double check that it still fit me because I haven't worn it for a while because obviously it's been, it had been winter and what have you. And I tried it on, I thought, nope, that size is perfect for me. I'm just going to make that up again in exactly the size 
that I had done it before. And I am pleased with with how it's come out, but I've made a bit of a boo-boo and, I, and I, I'm a bit cross with myself really because once, once I'd done what I'd done, there was no one doing it and it's such a shame. But basically what I've done, I'll try and come a bit closer, is I have put the buttonholes on and I've put the buttons really a long way out, let me show you, from the edge. In fact, maybe I could change this, but I've put the buttons buttons a long way out from the edge. Instead of sort of near the, the this edge, I've put them in. Because once I put it on, I thought it felt like it was way, way too big. Forgetting that it had the tie at the back. And actually, maybe I ought to undo those buttons. I thought it was the buttonholes that were in the wrong place, but now I'm showing you. I think it's actually the buttons that are in the wrong place because once you then tie it up with the tie, that then sort of draws it all back, all in, this little tie at the back. And I just feel like that now looks a bit strange that I've put those buttons in such a strange place. I need to have a play with it, don't I, and see if I can change what it is. I mean, I think it looks okay, and I think it sort of falls okay, and it's certainly a really lovely, nice, swooshy dress, which is lovely, and it feels really nice on, but it just feels like the sizing is all out. The princess seams down here do fall directly over the fullest part of my bust, and I know that's exactly where they should fall, so yeah maybe i just need to have a little bit more of a play with it and how it's fitting etc but it just doesn't feel quite right just feels like it's off and i don't know whether that's my fault from where i have put the buttons in the wrong place or or what but give me your opinions i do love it when you when you guys tell me what you think because sometimes you come up with things that i hadn't thought of and that's really great and then it's like oh yeah okay yeah that's what i should have done <laughs> so the sleeves on this are different from the sleeves that come with the pattern a long long time ago um true bias did a um free pattern piece for a poofed sleeve which is what this is and I just added the poof sleeve on instead of the ordinary sleeve which is just a straight little sleeve you can have a cap sleeve or a straight sleeve I think I don't think it comes in long sleeve and then I just got the free pattern piece and added that on so it's just got a little bit of elastic at the bottom to make it nice and poofy and I quite like that I think it's quite nice it gives it something a little bit different it's not overly gathered at the top so it doesn't have this huge kind of poofiness which I'm not very keen on it's just a little bit of gathering just to make it um, a little bit pretty and summery but on the whole I'm quite pleased with it in terms of the fabric I am pleased with how the fabric washed I'm pleased with how it sewed up there are a couple of places in the fabric where I've stitched it and there is definitely a bit of pulling I think maybe if I'd used a microtex needle that might have actually helped I did put pockets in this but I <laughs> I put the pockets in the wrong place and when I tried it on <laughs> My hands couldn't reach where the pockets were. I was like, what the heck have I done? <laughs> so they were like, they're meant to be here and they were like, down. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't notice that when I was sewing them. I mean, they were sewn in beautifully, <laughs> but in the wrong place. So I just unpicked them and just thought, stuff it. I don't care about pockets. I'm going to take them out completely and just not bother having them at all, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, so that was, that was a bit strange. I don't know. I was obviously having a moment. <laughs> to be having a lot of them recently so yeah so it doesn't have any pockets but um i think the pattern doesn't come with the option of having pockets in it but in my jumpsuit version i decided i wanted them and i'd added them in and i put a note in the pattern to make sure if you want pockets add them in here so that's what i did i added them in but like i say added them in the wrong place and maybe that's what it was maybe just because it wasn't on the pattern i just hadn't lined them up properly with where they were meant to go but yeah on the whole i'm quite pleased with it bit bit annoyed about this bit i still feel like i need to have a bit of a play around with that bit um you may recognize this fabric because in my video last week i showed you a little camisole type top that i had made with the leftover fabric from it um and actually although when the fabric came i was a bit like oh it's not quite the color i thought it was i do actually think it suits me i think it looks quite nice it's not the sort of color i would normally wear but i do quite like it <laughs> so that is my make for minerva i'm going to show you the next thing my next make is a make that i just suddenly one day decided oh, i'm gonna make that 
<laughs> I was going to a sewing social day at Make at 140. They hold social sewing days every so often and I just fancied going one day and Helen from Stitch Rip Repeat was going. She's made the Avenir jumpsuit which is a pattern by Friday Pattern Company and I just suddenly thought oh do you know what I fancy making that. <laughs> So I did. <laughs> Had a bit of debate about what size to make. So the sizing for this goes from an X, an extra small to a 7X, and that is from a 32 to 33 inch bust up to a 59 to 60 inch bust. So again, a fairly good size range, I feel, for this jumpsuit. And I made this out of a viscose crepe that I got from uh, Rainbow Fabrics quite some time ago. It's just black and it's got these really bright red, blue flowers and green stems and things on it with a bit of white. And I am delighted with how this has come up. However, there are a couple of things which I'm a bit unsure about and if anybody's got any advice on that would be absolutely great so again i'll put pictures and video of this up as i'm wearing it um oh and i put another same label i put another label in that said i made this <laughs> so this jumpsuit features an elasticated neckline and elastic around i always do this don't i hold it up and then i can't do it elastic around the waist it has nice big pockets nice wide legs and nice sort of soft floaty sleeves you've got the option of making long sleeves as well but obviously this is for summer so i um i just made it with short sleeves um john and i it's our 25th wedding anniversary later next month and we're going away on um holiday and um i think this will be perfect for going away uh, we're going on a cruise so i can't wait to go and i think this will be perfect for it but the thing that I'm a little bit annoyed about, or I get a bit frustrated about, is the elastic around the neckline. So it says in the instructions to be really careful to make sure that when you put the elastic in that it's not twisted. And it's not, I've got the elastic in nice and flat. And I don't know whether or not I just need to go around and maybe stitch through the middle of all of the elastic because I find that it almost like like curves like in a C within within it as I'm sort of when I take it on and off to sort of go to the toilet and things like that when I take it off when it goes back on again it almost has twisted itself up and I feel like I'm then spending ages kind of like straightening it out and flapping it out and it's only when I take it off fully that I can properly get that um elastic to sit straight maybe it's the quality of the elastic that i've used i don't know maybe it's not good quality elastic i'm, I'm not sure i just thought elastic was elastic i don't know <laughs> maybe it's not i don't know um but yeah it's a bit of a shame it's just like inside there now i can feel it's all sort of twisted and when i put it in it was completely flat and if i spend a little bit of time going over it <clears throat> excuse me it is definitely flat i've not twisted it while it's in there and it's not about the fact that it twists, it's about the fact that it sort of goes into this C. So the channel that it's sat in is the right size. It's not too big or too small. It just, yeah, it's just very, very strange the way that it does that. But I really like the neckline on it. It has this sort of slightly squarish kind of neckline that comes on it. I decided to make the size small in this. Really, truly, I should have probably been a size medium, but I'm very happy with the fact that I made the size small. I don't like the look of lots of blousing over an elasticated waistband. I just just it it's not a look that I like and so I wanted something that was just going to have a slightly less blousier look and when I looked at the finished garment sizes for the size small everything was still going to be big enough I just knew that it meant it wasn't going to have quite so much blousiness over the top and on the whole really other than that weird elastic thing which is nothing it's probably a very simple sort out really um but other than that I'm really delighted with how this has come out and I think the colours really Really suit me and it's a nice look and like I say hopefully it'll be perfect for when we go on our cruise. <laughs> so that is my Avenir jumpsuit. On to the last thing. This is the last item that I have to show you and I have to say I think it is my most favourite out of all of the things that I've shown you today. <laughs> I absolutely love this dress. This is this So Liberated Stasia dress. 
Now I first came across this dress pattern because I bought a kit from Guthrie Garnet and I made it in this uh, creamy, almost leopard print. It's kind of coloured splodges all over it, which kind of gave a, an image of um, leopard print. Um, but I made it because of the kit. I've made it again since in a shorter version, which is okay. I, I prefer the long version, if I'm absolutely honest. And I came across this fabric at Make from 140 and fell in love with it and thought, what can I make with that? And then just suddenly thought, oh, the Stasia, that would be absolutely beautiful. And it would be so different from the original version that I made. So I'm really, really pleased that I bought it and made it and it hasn't sat on my stash. <laughs> so very quickly, the Stasia dress comes in a size 0 to 34, which gives a bust size of 31 inches to 58 and a half. And I made the size 10, and that is absolutely accurate for my size. I My bust is 36, my waist is 30, and my hips are about 38, 38 and a half. And that's exactly what I fell into. So I made it. The only adjustment that I did make is I very slightly lengthened the body. I think I lengthened it by an inch because the original version I felt sat fairly well on my waist. The next version I made, which was short, um, came up a little bit high and I think that's because the fabric didn't weigh it down and I knew this fabric was a little bit lighter than my original version so I just lengthened the, the waist um, seam by the length and short of knives, I just added an inch onto it. So, a couple of things with this dress. First of all, oh, and I've got a label in this one. What does this one say? This says one of a kind. <laughs> so the Sturzia comes with different length sleeve options. You can have short sleeve, I think three quarter length and long sleeve. Um, it has different neckline options. So the front neckline is like this. The back can either come with a neckline that is much further up, so like a standard sort of t-shirt or a scooped neckline. I think it might have three different necklines. Oh, it's got me thinking now. I'll try and put the images up of the uh, line drawings up on the screen. But I went for a more scooped out back version and um, I decided that I was going to do puffed sleeves with an elasticated bottom, just like I had done for my Shelby dress. So all I did is I took the sleeves for the Stasia and I literally cut it down the centre and I opened it up by about two inches, I think it was, that I did in the end. And then I gathered it so that it fitted in between the notches and the rest of it all sewed in and then I tried it on to see if I liked it before I overlocked it and all the rest of it and then I thought oh I quite like them just left or all like that I don't know that I want them to be gathered in with a piece of elastic at the bottom so that's what I ended up doing so I've got this slightly looser floatier kind of um, look sleeve and I'm super super pleased with that I also added the pockets because I do like to add the pockets and I'm quite pleased with that. Although what I did do is I sewed a little bar tack onto the bottom of the pocket so that it didn't keep sort of flapping around in different places. So it does stay to the front. And I made it at the absolute longest that I possibly could. Now, this dress isn't hemmed and I the, the fabric is a viscose jersey, so it's not gonna fray. But do you remember in my last video, I said I went to a funeral and I, the day before I kind of went, mm, I'm just going to make a dress. Well, I did the same with this. I was going to a wedding <laughs> and the day before the wedding, I suddenly went, oh, I'm going to make a dress. <laughs> and I don't know why I suddenly decided to do that. In fact, I think it might have even been the day I was going. I knew this would be a very, very simple make and something very quick to make up. So <laughs> I had all the pattern pieces cut out already. I knew it fitted me. All I needed to do was just lengthen that waistline that was absolutely fine and I know it must have been the day before I couldn't have done it on the day I might have finished it the, the day of the wedding so I literally whizzed this dress up as quickly as possible but I didn't have time to hem it and I thought oh I hope it'll be okay and you know what I've worn it a few times since and haven't hemmed it because it just falls let me lift it up gosh it's quite it's quite long actually <laughs> I don't know if I can lift it up there we go so now that is way down on my feet <laughs> who is going to notice that and it's not going to fray and actually do you know what I'm perfectly fine with that and it keeps it really light and floaty and fluid and 
yeah, unless it gets a little bit ruined, I'm not going to have it. <laughs> Sorry. Shoot me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think it's really, really nice. One of the features that I like about the Stasia is that it doesn't have a totally straight um, waist seam. And you're not going to be able to see it on here because the, the fabric is so patterned. But you'll be able to see it on the line drawings. But it has a sort of a V shape. You might be able to see it just about. So it comes down into a V and back up again. It just... I don't know, it just seems to have like a very feminine and very flattering kind of shape to it when you're wearing it. And I really like that. I just think this is a really pretty dress and I've enjoyed wearing it so much. I have worn this obviously prior to um, videoing it, but only a few times. But now that I've done my video, I'm going to wear it a lot more. <laughs> but I love the fact that this fabric is so light and um, floaty that I think this fabric is just absolutely stunning like I say it's a viscose jersey and it's from makeup 140 and I just think the colours are absolutely stunning they're really really beautiful and I'm so pleased with how it's come out so that was my last make <laughs> so I hope that you've enjoyed seeing all of the things that I've made and um, it's been really lovely just sort of getting out everything and rediscovering all the things that I've made recently. I've, I've been out of sorts of doing my videos and it's been really nice to come back and sort of share it and re-talk through all of the different things and um, kind of teach myself a few things as well, like check the buttons on this Shelby dress <laughs> before talking to you about it because I think I've just put the buttons in the wrong place. <laughs> sorry about that but yeah let me know if you think there's anything different I should do with that and I might come back and report in a different video as well about how I've got on with um, moving those buttons but yeah that's my partially my knitting some makes from Amy and also my makes my sewing makes so yeah it's been really great to share that with you do let me know what you've been up to and what you've been sewing I will hopefully start recording my me made months again I just haven't for the last couple of months because it's been a bit busy so I think I'm going to start again in August let me know if you would like to see those because it'd be nice to have a bit of feedback and see if that's the sort of thing you'd like to watch but other than that I'm going to say see you later take care everybody have a good week and I'll speak to you all again soon bye mm -hmm.